So today for the Athletic Mind Unleashed podcast, I have some of our special, very good friend and very magical person, Piotr Schiappel, with me. And we are in sunny Barcelona, middle of February, just so enjoying the best that this city has to offer. And this city also has a lot of magic to offer. And I think maybe we will also touch upon this a little bit. He's the kind of guy who keeps amazing me in some ways. And like, I don't even know where to start. So maybe I would just start with a name. So uh, in social media, you're known as MI Fit Coach. And this means mindful fitness. So maybe you would just say and talk about what the mindful fitness is all about. What does it mean to be a mindful fitness coach? Ooh, where should I start now? <laughs> with, <laughs> with, um, I might start with it from the from the beginning, from the origins. Mm -hmm. uh, but thank you so much for having me, and thank you so much for doing this um, not only conversation but a friendship uh, talk. Um, because you know, as you beautifully mentioned to me as well um, about all that I do and that I amaze you, I feel like we are mirrors of mm -hmm. each other. You know, so I I have to say as well, I I salute everything that you're doing and. I'm always amazed by how much you're actually doing. So, yeah, <laughs> am I fit coach? So it stands as a portmanteau of the two words, mindful fitness. Mm -hmm. And it stands for um, a deeper connection to your physical body uh, by appreciating, not judging it, by becoming aware of how the body um, is able to move mm -hmm. and how it always works with you if you just allow it to work with you. So the mindfulness part is quite important for me and whoever I train and wherever I teach these programs, because mindfulness means that you're becoming aware of how to use the physical body that we all have. And I don't like to say that um, the physical body or the body itself is a temple because that's actually boring. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a vessel. Um, it's like, you know, a very luxurious car mm -hmm. that you really want to pay attention to. You want to put the best oil in, the best fuel in. You really want to make sure that that body uh, that vessel works well for you uh, throughout your entire lifespan because it's all about longevity and vitality. And now we hear so much about biohacking and these are the actually things that we are biohacking with. Connecting with our body, connecting with our breath, with our body. And then the fitness aspect, it can be, it's such a broad term because it can be anything and everything from physical movement to actually work out, to cycling, to be more mindful of walks in nature. Everything is fitness. The, the minute we start moving the body, and becoming aware of the physical sensations that are happening in the body, the heartbeat um, rising up, the sweating, the panting. When we start kind of go getting out of our comfort zone, when we feel a bit of discomfort, I feel like this is where we are reaching different and next levels and heights of our um, of our beingness. I mean, it's it's all connected to, to that physical aspect. So that is kind of that is the mindful fitness um, recipe, mm. really. Yeah, but of course, everybody who looks at you, they will also notice, okay, this guy, he also has to go to the gym, obviously. So do you also put this mindfulness into your, uh, I don't know, you know, this gym practice or like workouts practice? Absolutely. Um, everything that I do. And, um, and actually great that you mentioned this because I also, I also stand firmly with the belief and I am the example of do not ju judge a book by the cover mm. because for 28 years of my life, I wasn't into fitness. I did nothing, nothing about in relation to fitness. Uh, I didn't do any sports. I never watched sports. I still kind of don't. And that comes back from my belief of, uh, not belief, but being bullied. Uh, and my belief was that uh, the bullies are the athletic people. Mm. So I never, I never wanted to do anything with sports because for me, that was straight away a... Uh, Sport equals bully. Mm. Sport athletic equals bully. So for me, it was it was actually um, a lot of time had to pass for me to understand why I need and my body needs to be fueled by fitness, by physical activity. And we can definitely we're definitely going to touch on that yeah. as well. Um, but but um, in the gym, by all means, I, I I do strength workouts, and of course, as well, the older I get, I'm at this beautiful age of thirty nine. Mm -hmm. moment <laughs> pause no because i am really appreciating this this moment and a lot of people are so scared of aging and so afraid of of the numbers um where in fact if you treat your body well your body will reward you back um mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter where you are on your journey 
um, how much you might have believed in your excuses that you can't do this, you're not good enough, you're too fat, too thin, all of these name-shaming um, ways of, of, of telling ourselves really how we are, you can at any age stop that cycle and revert back your aging, but also revert back your, your biological age, your, 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 uh, how your body actually feels and how your body um, responds. And you can, at any age, start a fresh new journey into mm -hmm. fitness. And I believe like we, we, we carry that yeah. together, right? We understand the importance of, of being fit, but with that funny, com compassionate, kind aspect. You know, you don't have to be um, a critic or, you know, angry all the time when you work out. No, do it in a funny way, more compassion, more loving towards your body. And your body, as I said, will always reward you. Yeah, I think I have, I have also been in this state where I was actually kind of punishing my own body and putting mm. it through very hard things because I was, I'm still doing bodybuilding, but I'm not competing this year and didn't compete last year. But I have been through this cycle of you know dieting and pushing harder and this brain fog mm. and like not having any energy so i wasn't very kind to my body i started changing this when i started to study to be a coach and my very good teacher ronan diego he was always uh, talking about body talk and actually talking to your body and i think mm. this is also like you know becoming more mindful so i started talking to my body and i st started this coaching uh, certification when i was like maybe one month away from my first competition. So it was also the perfect time to start mm. that kind of new approach. And at some point, I think I was like sitting in front of like a full size mirror mm. and I was talking to my body and also like saying sorry for all the hard things that I have been doing mm. to it. Because it's like, yeah, your body is more than just a vessel. I think it's also like a very important part of you. So we need to honor it more. It's a, it, it is a storage as well. It's a mm -hmm. storage of all your thoughts, beliefs and emotions and feelings about yourself and about the world. Um, so the body contains all these cells, which are so cells of wisdom, you know, so whatever thought you ever had, whatever, however you called yourself, um, you should be aware that this is stored somewhere in your body. Mm -hmm. This is why I've built mindful fitness and my fit coach. And from that moment, I saw the necessity to speak in a more relatable language with not only all my clients, but also people from so many different backgrounds for them to understand as well that the body, um, as I said before, it will definitely serve you if you treat it well, but also if you communicate well with the body. So what you said, it's so powerful because the way we speak, it's quite often in the critical voice, mm -hmm. um, shaming ourselves. Um, believing that we have to be a certain way, believing that we have to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. And it all comes back to trying to feel that we belong or be accepted mm -hmm. by either the bodybuilding industry, by the gym colleagues, by our um, neighborhood, by the country, whatever the, whatever the, the overall kind of model for mm -hmm. male, female is. And unfortunately, we have been fed by a lot of magazines, an image that is an that is definitely an image of not always health, yeah. but of good looks, right? Aesthetic pleasing mm -hmm. look, looks. And of course, yes, we all know about different angles, cameras, setups. I absolutely, I hope everyone understands that as well by now, <laughs> that it's all about the actual setup of the shoot or photo shoot. Yes. But also what I have noticed is, is that change of not only the way you speak to yourself, but also what you believe, what you want to achieve through fitness. So I, tend to say that you don't aspire to look good to feel good but mm. you have to feel good to look good yeah. and feeling and raising you know we have all these hormones in us we have you know from endorphins to dopamine serotonin all of it is in us and only by moving the body we can actually have that boost of good mood mm -hmm. happy attitude and suddenly you feel invincible you felt that yeah and suddenly you just you, you're you're just feeling so loving and, and kind and everything is just everything everything just feels like you're on on cloud nine and happy and joyful but that is the, the beauty of of what we what we possess if we only just move um that little bit more with attention uh with kindness without comparing uh, ourselves to anyone else because your body is very precious it is your body 
again it is a storage unit as well it's a vessel but your storage um, that means also because sometimes people might question what does that actually mean it, mm -hmm. it does mean that you are holding on your cells are holding on to a lot of not only the self-talk but also your generational um upbringing conditioning programs of your society how you should behave look etc all coming back to, to really tribal times and this is where i then started to go really deep with somatic experiences mm. and soma means the body so everything that is stored in the body can be released from the body and can be utilized mm -hmm. reused and just if it's something that doesn't serve us let go of it and it's quite possible to do that yeah i think there's also this term like psychosomatic uh, diseases so it's like it's actually like coming from your thoughts and this is some kind maybe you have like some kind of negative thought and this is like making you actually sick so you have something in your psyche in your mind and then it you know translates into some kind of bodily experience and you're like uh, yeah. very often it's like we're not really sick but we're holding on to some kind of negative thing a lot of and the beauty of this world right now is that a lot of science is proving to us what we kind of already knew or we felt um that our bodies are having they have to do something with the stress and chronic stress so a lot of the autoimmune diseases that are out there nowadays are related to chronic stress burnouts and not paying attention to your body sensations unfortunately and fortunately because if we know this we can take action mm. so there's been a, a, a massive uh, break which is now bridged like a massive gap which is now bridged lovely together from science to beliefs and you know i feel so good but what does that even mean you know i feel mm. so good when i work out and how can i now say this or make sure that my client or my friend tries to work out a little bit more but now you can have if somebody needs evidence you can have it it's fact mm. it's actual all the research in the last couple of years have proven exactly that that um the, way, the more we move the body, the more not only physically healthy and fit we are, but al also mentally well. And that is the biggest bridge because physical health and mental health are one. Yeah. We have so neglected that we, we truly believed that we have to, um, maybe we can read a little bit about mental well-being and then we'll be fine. No, you have to move the body to be also mentally fine. And then you can start seeing as well that a lot of, a lot of your worries, um, suffering, even some traumas can, um, can be um, detached from your body. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, with a neurosomatic coach like that I am, I'm happy then to help people to go from somatic experience through um, a breathwork journey, which will release then as well a lot of the mm. energy and then into um, a possible, um, yeah, more fulfilling life. Yeah, I think it's so true that movement always makes everything better. Sometimes mm. I tend to forget it, but if I do remember, I just put on some music and it's like, okay, in a few minutes you can already be so much better just because you're moving. You're moving the stagnant energy in your body and you're like moving also the stuck parts. You're also moving the things that are like, you know, making you unhappy at this moment. And, and if they're like moving, maybe they will also like come out as sweat yeah. and just, you know, leave your body. I think you're also like talking a lot about, you know, sweating and, you know, fluids leaving your body yeah, in all kinds yeah. of ways. Say it, say like, it. No, no, say it. Like peeing, Listen, peeing, exactly. Peeing, pee it out. Sweating. Pee out your stress. Pee it out. Sweat it out. Uh, exhale it out. Yeah. Honestly, it's, it's all connected. We, you know, our bodies are able to do all this. This, mm -hmm. is, this is the power of our body. Yeah, it's like, and you will feel so much better once you have peed because you have fulfilled <laughs> your basic need. 100%. And it's, it's you can yeah. think again clearly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, wow. And I know that you have also gone through this uh, very hard journey of like bodybuilding. You have been to this extreme fitness as mm. well. Yeah. So how was this experience? Yeah, I, I, I can be quite extreme uh, because <laughs> I can, I'm very disciplined. Um, so I can be very determined and to achieve a goal. Um, so my goal was in a few years ago. Uh, I believe it was just before the the collective trauma happened, meaning COVID. Mm. <laughs> uh, I think it was 2018, 17, um, when I decided to challenge my body. Mm. And I really wanted to challenge more, not only my body, but my, the belief that I had about my body. Because I had a... I had a, it wasn't a love hate relation it was a hate relationship mm. with my body i really despised my physical body because again as a teenager being bullied by the athletic boys i was always told that i'm this way this way and i was you know fat shamed 
um you know i was beaten up um i was physically and, and then um, mentally abused uh, for many years so for me um my body was obviously not looking a certain way so that means that i'm not belonging so that means that i'm not part of the tribe and of course our mentality will, will always try to be part of a tribe so if we're not part of a community we feel less meaning that you know we're not good enough mm. you know so um so i tried um literally so many um diets as well i don't use the word diet anymore because diet has a really strong negative connotation for your mind and the mind starts believing that the diet is just for a certain time and then mm -hmm. afterwards you can go back to let's say binge eating yeah. or just you know so so be very mindful about it. again these are words as well that are stored in our body yeah Finally, i don't i don't want to use that word yeah. either because for me diet sounds something like short term and temporary yeah, exactly and i want to like bring lifestyle changes to my clients exactly 100 percent, 100 percent, and uh, exactly i mean yes so so even having these mini changes in your vocabulary helps a lot um, with, with that understanding. Um, so I have um, decided to uh, compete in a physique show. Um, it was part of the United Kingdom physique show. It was done in Northern Ireland, in Belfast, in the capital um, of Northern Ireland. And yeah, and I had 12 weeks with a, an amazing friend of mine who was a great coach uh, to prepare me for it. I also wanted to do this not only to challenge my body and where I can, how far I can bring my body, but also I wanted to really to coach um, people that are mm. willing to compete and into bodybuilding because I wanted to understand. I knew that I know how to train people because at that stage as well, I became a coach. I studied sports science and I, I, um, I became super interested um, in how the body moves, how the body is and what we can do with the body and how you know endurance is different to cardiovascular strength is different to flexibility and all these little um, all these different modalities uh, how we can use them all and um, so uh, at that stage i was already a really successful coach fitness coach uh, with lots of clients uh, back in ireland in the republic of ireland close to dublin and then i decided yeah let's let's step it up and let's see how it would be to, to train people that are preparing for competition because there's something very unique about a person that competes because I feel like a person that competes is willing to go through one of the most toughest challenges for their mind and their body and their energy and and still be able to push through right I mean it's just it's so incredible because it has nothing to do anymore with physical training once you hit like in my case it was I think I was four weeks out or five weeks out where I could see that my training was on point. My food choices were on point. Mm. It was amazing. But then the mental awareness and endurance kicked in and the resilience and the strength. And, and I started to really focus on where I put my energy and I was really focused on the training and on the food and, and still, you know, still enjoying the journey. I never, I never thought for a second that I'm not enjoying it. Mm um but yeah but so that was a, a great way for me to see how far i can bring my body of course six days before the competition it was on a monday the competition was going to be on sunday on a monday i had a physical breakdown wow. and was taken by an ambulance uh, because i just pushed too hard i was also as i said i was a coach and that and those days i also had was instructing a spin class, a boot, cla boot camp class. Um, so I, my my food was on 1,200 calories plus. Mm -hmm. So it was just a lot for my body to handle. I kind of didn't think of this. Again, I was so determined. I had like um, the, the exact amounts of water that I could drink. I'd never taken steroids, but I was just very obsessed with, with, with redoing it. And of course, I... Uh, well, of course, I, I just I just pushed so hard that I, I collapsed and uh, yeah, taken to the hospital. The doctor uh, did all the checks and then um, and then I put out my container with food and he was like, but what are you doing? You have to eat like eat some bread. And I was like, no. And but he was like, no, you have to. And, and actually, and I did. I, I broke my my <laughs> my diet, <Aww. laughs> uh, but still I showed up on stage. And I got second place as Mr. Fitness, second place as Mr. Beachbody, and third place as Mr. Strength, I think. I believe yeah. that was the title. Because that was a category that I didn't participate in, but the organizer of the event saw me, and he said, you should go for that category as well. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I've done. Okay, wow. So did you take like any lessons from this uh, 
journey, like like any kind of uh, tools, tips from that kind of fitness era that you got teach to other people. There is a, a, what I love the most about fitness is mm. that it's so relatable to every other aspect of your life, and I do believe like you know discipline and being very goal oriented and knowing where you want to bring your body your health to to what point and by when it's quite important and you have to work with smart goals mm. specific measurable achievable result and time you have to be really working in because a, go a goal is only a goal when you can see how a big goal can be sliced into smaller mm -hmm. goals and then you can use these smaller goals and achieve them at a certain time. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if, if you have a goal, not just a dream, have dreams, dream big. Absolutely. I always say dream bigger, reality listens. Right? You plant seeds, go for it, dream big. But goals are very, are much more, are kind of boring for a lot of people, I feel. You know, they're, they're just boring. Because you suddenly have to be like, okay, by, you know, and, and you have to be like, okay, is this actually achievable? Is this, you have to be very honest with yourself. So um, I feel like your entire routine is, and how to stay consistent to, um, to any aspect of your life, fitness, health related or bodybuilding related, is to know how you start your day. Be very conscious about your morning routine. I like to add to that the evening routine actually matters more than the morning routine because how you put yourself to bed and how you decide to spend your last minutes before you fall asleep is quite, quite important. So um, I like to do a lot of gratitude before I fall asleep. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't, I'm not writing it down. I'm just in bed. You know, My head is already on the pillow and I just say out loud the things that I'm grateful that happened that day. Mm. You know, and, and the more you start picking on these things, the more you start seeing as well the gratitude, then you can wake up with that feeling of gratitude. And also go to bed with an intention, you know, go to bed with an intention of how you want to um, sleep and dream and how you want to come into the next day, mm. you know, and then your morning routine, um, it's very powerful at how you set yourself up for success mm. throughout the day. So um, for me, it would be definitely like a cold shower, mm. a very cold shower, but I straight away go into a full on, um, like almost singing of my affirmations. When I do this, I'm just like, I am abundant. I am strong. I am powerful. I, you know, when the, when the cold hits my body, mm. I love that. Um, and, and then, yeah. And then be, you know, I, I love to meditate. I love to be mindful. I love to play with my dog, uh, and but be in the playing of the dog. Uh, I like to, you know, drink lots of water in the morning for sure. Plenty of water, and again, be with every sip of that water. Don't be, uh, you know, at a at a gig two two hours later. Be at a, be mindful in that act of drinking water, and it's challenging. It's it's tough because again, a lot of the stuff that is happening around us will try to. Um, you know, stimulate us and overstimulate mm -hmm. us and make us kind of stop and, and, and believe that everything else is more important mm -hmm. than you. The world is kind of designed in that way to show you that, look at me, do me, you know, work with me. You know, I'm more important than you yourself, but mm -hmm. you have to prioritize yourself because only when you prioritize yourself, you can then look after the world and all, all, all that is um, surrounding you. So the routines, uh, do you also like take the routines with you? Like I use this to pack a routine with you whenever, whenever you travel, because I talk a lot about uh, traveling and how to be a healthy decade nomad or like a frequent traveler, because I think you can pack a routine with you. And I think you are also traveling a lot because you're like, doing retreats abroad, like all across the world. So do you mm. take your routines with you or what happens to them when you like leave home? Always, always and forever. Um, routines are very important. It doesn't matter where I am. A I mean, this is why a routine also makes you feel at home wherever you go. Mm. So, you know, and of course, yes, it there will be slight changes. Not everything will run as smoothly as at home, and that's okay. Just don't be so over judgmental as well over yourself. If mm. you, um, you know, if you from six things haven't done two, you know, just don't, don't do that to yourself. But be... Uh, like I'm, the way I travel is I always make sure as well that wherever I go, there is a gym and I know that there is a gym and I 
I almost, I, we had this conversation the other day. I almost feel like I'm more excited about gyms than museums. So I always look at where's the nearest gym. And then I observe as well how people are training in another country. I mean, I do my own training, but I'm like very curious of, is this a country more for CrossFit? Is there a, is this a country more for cardio? Is this more are bodybuilding here? Is this, so you can see, is this more quality or quantity? Is it more the looks or the feeling? You can see that in gyms, you know, how, how, how the country, and that's just, that's just my, maybe weird way of being but that's that's okay i always pack as well with me uh resistance bands always uh because if there's no gym or if i'm really you know going wherever and i feel like i need a, a mini session i i use resistance bands um for my entire body a full full body workout um and then yeah and then um the 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 small things obviously in which journaling um i always have my journal with me making sure that i capture the experiences and how I feel in the experiences in my journal. Um, water is available mm. everywhere. Um, I hope you have access to, to, to fresh water. I generally mean that. Um, and again, you can be mindful while doing that. And new places, what I love, and I'm, I'm traveling soon to Mexico. And then, you know, we'll be in Estonia together. Mm. And then we'll be, you know, um, in different spots as well. And, and I'm, I'm in Barcelona, as you mentioned, a lot of events are happening here. But I travel a lot with, with work, with events, with retreats and workshops. But I tend to also um, be very uh, focused on my breathing routine. When I, and that's part of my morning routine. That's part of my routine in general. So the way you breathe is the way you are, really. You know, mm. so you can either choose to be living in chaos or living in calm, um, you know, and I choose calm. You know, if, if I need energy, by all means, yes, I, I, I breathe a certain way, but that's also why I, I got to my level of being a breathwork master, uh, to be able to not only teach others, but also learn every single day how my breath is stabilizing me and making me really feel connected with, with my mission. Um, but I think these are the, the main kind of aspects. The, the resistance bands always with me, the, the water mind, mindful drinking of water um, exploration that's actually another thing if, especially when you're traveling use nature and use um, your movement by walking hiking wherever you can and be the observer of life itself you know that is the power that that is meditation you don't have to really sit in a lotus position in your hotel room go out to a beach to a mountain even to a cafe and sit down and just observe without judgment, just see how people are living. And it, and trust me, you can see that you can do that anywhere you, you, you are. Yeah, I love doing that. Mm. So you also mentioned you are like a breathwork master. Does it mean that the breathwork that you are doing for yourself every day, is it like super advanced and complicated or what does it even mean? It's like, mm. I just started doing breathwork, I don't know, like last year. And I'm like, at some point I was like, uh, I don't know, I wasn't sure about it, do I want to do it or not, but it's, I think there are so many different ways to do it, but how does it, how to do, do it as a, you know, master? Mm, is it like yeah. different? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, right, the guru in me is yeah. like the master. I mean, because um, the, the level of uh, mastery is, is, it literally is based on different levels that, that you kind of grow through um, or pass. So there is a, a deeper connection with uh, the breath itself than how the breath is therapeutically helping you, removing your programs, conditioning from your body that are not serving you. So there's, there's a neurosomatic experience. So the somatic, the body, soma's body. So the, the, the breath done in a certain way, you're able to tap into not only your limitless but also into some stored traumas some pains some suffering um, and through the breath and uh, by guidance as well it can be after a while your own guidance but initially i would definitely recommend having uh, a person that would be that you would really relate to it i mean and this is very important because um, I, I see so many breathwork schools out there right now, and there's so many uh, facilitators out there, and it's all beautiful and, and amazing. But uh, be very mindful of of who you spend your energy with, uh, because it's it's quite important to um, gain trust with your facilitator. So I tend to 
find out who's coming to my sessions, um, who, um, what kind of intentions they have, what kind of blocks, traumas, limitations they have, what is stopping them. Mm. Some, most people are aware of it. Some, some think that this is, it, this is what they're aware of, but actually it's not. It's a deeper wound. And all is great, but I, I also believe that you have to, as a facilitator, create a very safe container for people to open up and really get the most out of a breathwork journey. Mm -hmm. uh, and for you as a, as a participant, it's quite important to ask questions to the facilitator uh, and find out where they are on their path of, you know, of, of breeding and, and try not to maybe jump straight into um, a breathwork journey that might just bring up too much. Mm -hmm. um, and too much um, is exactly what we are shown right now on different social media platforms uh, where all these releases um, are, are happening. It almost looks like an exorcism. Mm -hmm. And well, by all means, it can happen. I, I, I host retreats, I lead retreats all around the world, and this is exactly what sometimes does happen. But it happens when um, there is so much preparation done that the body can release more. But sometimes we are unaware that the breath can bring us so far and we haven't we haven't done anything even just a simple inhale and exhale we were just so unaware how important and how powerful the breath is that we might be in a situation where we are facing so much trauma at once then then it just hides back and you're sort of left in a sense of like what just happened mm. am i re-traumatized am i feeling lost and not every facilitator can hold the space for you so just be very mindful. I don't want to scare anyone. I want to honestly, I want really everyone to um, to, to to try it, to to be very connected with with, with the breath, with the energy, uh, with movement, somatic experiences. By all means, yes, we're here to explore this life and to see what we can do. But find um, not only a safe space, but also a facilitator that really cares. Yeah, I think why I haven't been doing breath work before is like I was a little bit against of the against this this very like. <gasps> fast breathing and I was like okay I, and I thought that this was like that was breath work <laughs> but yeah. you know there are like so different uh, ways to do it and now yeah. I have realized and I can also confirm I'm, I've been to your longer practice as well to unpack yourself yeah. and yeah I felt very safe and I felt like very very held as well and in this session I actually saw my future self and I had never seen her before and she was like, she was happy, she was like very calm and relaxed and I have like problem with relaxing and resting and she was like, oh yeah, keep going, keep going, you're doing the right thing, just keep going and that was uh, very reassuring and I think I just met my future self because it was like very safe environment as well. Mm. So Thank you, thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, I, I, I tend to... I, I really believe and I tend to um, hold sessions based on how I would like to feel as a participant. Mm. For me, safety, trust is very important. And, you know, our bodies, again, can hold so much trauma and we might feel first very much, very, offense, very offended if we are suddenly breaching almost like a contract between the body and the mind, right? Because mm. the mind is always trying to keep you safe, right? Mm. And however that looks. But the mind will, will try to um, label everything that is happening. So if, let's say you were bullied by a person that looked this way and suddenly somebody comes in your reality looking very similar, your mind will protect you and be like, oh, don't go near that person because of the remembering of the body. So the mind, it, it, and there's no evil here. There's no mind is better than or, or worse than the body. The body is better than the mind. No, not at all. Um, I do believe that everything serves a purpose and the mind is very... Uh, powerful um, in that sense, but in conjunction with the body. So if you tap into the into the feelings, the goosebumps, the 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 gut feeling, the the butterflies mm -hmm. in your stomach, you can uh, truly see how you can remove anything that doesn't serve you. And what you said as well, um, there's so many schools out there that are using the sympathetic nervous system activation, meaning mouth breathing, right? Inhale and exhale through the mouth. And again, there is time for that, absolutely. But because we are already living in a world that makes us constantly breathe through our mouth mm -hmm. and makes us constantly in a state of um, fight or flight, we're constantly overstimulated. So our default mode, although we don't know this, we are mouth breathers, right? A lot of people are mouth breathers. If you're also talking, what we're doing right now, I am mouth breathing. But the minute Celia starts talking, I close my mouth and I come back to my nose. And that is already a hack that you can do 
as you watch this, wherever you're watching this or, 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 or listening to this, just keep your mouth shut, literally, shut your mouth and just breathe through the nose. Because that is the power of mindfulness where you can just calm down your nervous system without any chaos, just relax your breathing. So all the sessions that I do, but well, not that 90% of the sessions that I do, because then I do one-on-one -on -one therapeutical journeys as well with people. And that would be slightly a different approach, very individual. But most of them are the parasympathetic nervous system. So that is the, um, the calm, rest, digest state. And that is usually done when you breathe in through the nose, in using the diaphragm, expanding the belly, and make sure as well that your shoulders are relaxed, your chest is relaxed, and we can even place a hand on your on your on our uh, bellies and, our, and a hand on our chest, and just observe the flow there, if it enters the body and goes into your belly, then into your chest, and then out. And let's use a technique here so we can blow it out through the mouth. Throughout your every day. Always breathe in and out through the nose. It's nasal breathing. Mouth is for digestion, nose is for respiration. Mm -hmm. Huge difference. This is why there's a lot of, there, there's actually an increased number of uh, uh, mouth ulcers, mouth cancers, tongue cancers. It's actually become, because we're just, it's not, it's, it has nothing to do as well with, uh, with um, the stuff that is kind of in the air, although it has as well because the mm -hmm. nose filters. But it's just because it's very dry air entering. I also heard uh, recently on a podcast, I think, about the Superman lab, where he said that people also have like more cavities and more broken teeth just because they're breathing through the mouth. Absolutely. And, and our, our entire skull, our entire yeah. jaw has, has completely transformed. Uh, so yeah, just if you, so if, if you have that connection done with your breath, with the inhale and the exhale, and you can just truly observe as well how your shoulders are dropping down, You're relaxing into the breath with every inhale and every exhale. And trying to even double the exhale time, that gives you a further tapping into relaxation, calm, awareness, calm. Yeah. This is the beauty of just a couple of cycles of inhale and exhale, how we can come back to our natural, what should be our natural state of being. Mm. Yeah. I am calmer. Yeah. And, it is, and also, as we can be pretty honest, we don't use our, our belly, our diaphragm too much. Well, guess, guess why? If, let, let's play a little game. Everyone, just guess why. Guess why we are not breathing into the belly? Because you're pretty more into the chest and you're like always in this rushing state. Yes, also. But the big reason why we're not is that we've been told to have a flat belly. Mm. So every time we go somewhere, we hold our belly, we, we tense, we, our core is like, we are like, oh no, I cannot show. Because if you breathe into the belly, the belly goes out. And you, you, I think you know how the Buddha looks like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but he is, he is actually not obese. This is belly breathing that he shows. So if you observe the, the Buddha statue, it's actually he's just belly breathing. So this is the importance of, of understanding how our bodies actually are able to look well obviously we, no, nobody would like to have a constant belly, <laughs> belly constant floating yeah, <laughs> no that has nothing to do with that but at the same time just understanding that that a lot of the things that we've been told are based on a lot of marketing that is actually not as our body should function and this is where we started to really lose our attention and lose our connection with our body and i think also when you were you know, getting ready for the bodybuilding states. At least that was my experience when I was doing the posing classes. I had to learn how to not let air into my belly. I had to learn how to breathe mm. more with my chest in because it's like you have to suck your belly in, like really, really in. And every morning you also have to do like this vacuum. So mm -hmm. you're like, <laughs> yeah. And it's like, yeah. And then like just breathing through the chest very slowly and just smiling. And it's <laughs> but you see, you're touching on something very important. I think your audience will really appreciate this because 
that's okay if you're controlling it mm -hmm. and if you know that there's almost going to be um, a time when you can either revert back to, to, the, to the physiology of your mm -hmm. body or just do that at certain times. You don't have to constantly do the vacuum, right? You yeah. didn't do 24 hours vacuum. <laughs> no, no. no, and that is, so, so, so this is what we're, you know, a, a lot of the knowledge that is out there, uh, also about stress, it's, it's quite important to understand fully because there's stress that is good if it's used by the body and by, you know, by, but constant stress, chronic stress, that is where the, the real pandemic and epidemic right now mm -hmm. is because that leads then to inflammation, the body fighting, autoimmune diseases, the body really trying to protect you because there's just so much stress right now in your body and has, and there's no output. You know, a workout can release the sweating, the peeing out, the respiration, the energy, all of it can be released. You know, but if, if, you're, if you're aware of it, a lot of the stress, we are either eating the stress, mm -hmm. emotional eating, it's, it's also, also a big, a big uh, pandemic. Uh, yep. There's just so many things that are, that, that if used with the body, it can be um, used in a very good, positive way. Mm. And what would you tell to someone like me who has had like, I don't know, runny nose since I was like eight, seven. So it's more than two decades of my life. Mm. Uh, I think I started having runny nose, yeah, when I was at the age of seven. Uh, when I was nine, I also had an operation because, you know, there's this, I don't know, adenoids or whatever that was like blocking. And I was like, I was breathing at night, like fully mouth open, like mm. for many years. That's why they had to do the operation. And mm. even now it's like, very often my nose is a little bit like congested because yeah. I ha this is like very narrow here. So that's why. Yeah. And I always had like this, especially when it's like colder. So how can I like breathe more through my nose? Uh, there's always going to be some body challenges. Uh, and obviously there's um, the way the nose is also built. So sometimes it might be harder to breathe through the nose uh, and, and then we revert again, again, our body is very clever. So it will always try to help you. So we'll default back to, 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 to an easier way of breathing. But as often as possible throughout the day, if you can revert yourself back to no nose breathing, that's one gift that you can give yourself. If it's safe enough to do so, you can also uh, tape your mouth at nighttime. Right, um, and this might sound um, quite severe, but actually, it's not. You're really completely uh, tap, uh, taping your mouth. But even if you know, there's a little like a little plaster mm. of, of tape, and again, it might be that you will last with that plaster for an hour, and then it will automatically be taken off, or you'll wake up and you'll just at the night time you'll be just like, oh, God, I cannot do this, and that's okay as well. But what you're doing, you're constantly pushing yourself out of that comfort zone into that discomfort mm -hmm. and your body will finally address it and the body will finally re start reverting automatically to all this default because everything is a journey so it's not about just suddenly you know if you've been a mouth beater to suddenly be fully an, a, a nasal beater because it's it's impossible you know it's it's just not not going to happen but if you take it step by step and if even if you give yourself little reminders in your phone mm -hmm. you know breathe through the nose you know, connect with as often as possible. Whenever you're not, uh, uh, whenever you're not um, talking, um, when you're not eating, because obviously when you're eating, you're also mouth breathing. Mm -hmm. As often as possible, have these moments where you can just, if you're on a bus, on a plane, on a metro, come back to your mm. nasal breath. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, it needs like conscious attention. But it's like sometimes yeah. it's like so, I don't know, full of whatever mm. stuff and then that's why it's also like hard to breathe but can like actually breath work make it better make the nose i don't know less blocked absolutely no there is there's also a, um, a technique that you can use if you have a blocked nose so that you can literally breathe into the nose breathe out breathe in again hold the breath i don't like pinching the nose i like to i prefer to just hold like this and you start shaking the head. A bit more, a bit more vital, just like... About 30 times, and then you release. Okay. And you just repeat that cycle. Mm. Okay. It's a powerful way to uh, unblock mm. the nose and connect it really with... If you, uh, I hope you don't have a, a like, light-headed <laughs> moment like, ooh, 
yes, okay, what was yeah. this? No, but, it, but it's, it's, a, it's a very powerful way as well to be able to, to connect yeah. with, with nasal breathing. I would say that whenever I'm running, I'm now trying to breathe through my nose but after like certain heart rate it gets harder yeah. and when it's like cold temperature it gets like very runny again it's like it's almost impossible to breathe through the nose and actually i think when i was still like running seriously and i was going to the sports doctor for like tests but also like to put the oxygen mask on you and you know all these mm. different things mm. to measure your heart rate yeah. the, the doctor was also saying that oh you should breathe more through your mouth actually because they are like, recommending to breathe through the mouth when you're like doing some kind of things like running because they are saying that more air gets in. Mm. Well, I don't know, is it actually a good thing to do or not? I mean, the thing about it is that you will definitely, there comes a moment where you will revert to mouth breathing once you hit a certain percentage mm -hmm. of your um, of your max, right? If, yeah. it's, if you're there, it, it will be almost impossible. But that's why all of the rhetoric should really train you to uh, to breathe more through the nose and less through the mouth. Mm. Well, uh, the reason, it's not just because of the respiration, but also what is happening when you breathe in through the nose, you are um, releasing a gas like nitric oxide that is only placed in the nose. Mm. So if you breathe in through the nose, what is happening is the air that enters your body is then with the nitric oxide going into your bloodstream mm. and that oxygen then with a tolerance build up for, with CO2 is then released to the active tissue cells that are in need of the fresh oxygen. Mm -hmm. Because what is happening usually with oxidative stress, with chronic stress and, and, and uh, over breathing, mouth breathing, chaotic breathing, is that actually our red blood cells are carrying so much oxygen that it almost, it's almost like a, the, the best way to uh, imagine it, it's like a rusting car. Mm -hmm. if, a, if a car is out, so this is, imagine this is your blood cell. Your, the car is out and it has a lot of oxygen it starts rusting. So this is exactly what is happening. The body starts really fighting mm -hmm. as well. It And so only by breathing into the nose, we are actually releasing into the bloodstream nitric oxide, which is an antioxidant. Mm -hmm. And what is and chronic stress, oxidative stress, so antioxidant. So you don't have to um, just eat blueberries to get antioxidants, <laughs> yeah. right? Although I love blueberries, by all means, yes. But you can also breathe more through the nose because mm -hmm. that that is the only way so far that has been researched or has been found yes because there, there's some research right now that is telling as well that there's nitric oxide in muscle cells mm -hmm. uh, but nothing has been confirmed yet but the nasal breathing the respiration especially on the inhale helps with releasing that gas and that is the power of not only um, being an antioxidant but also anti-inflammatory, um, antifungal, antiviral, and allows then your um, your blood to flow in a much more um, coherent way. So it sounds like actually breathing properly is like a biohack. It is for your body. Hundred percent. So you don't need yeah. all this fancy stuff. You just breathe. Yeah. So yeah. How, how would somebody who has never done any breath work? How would they start? I, this is actually great that you mentioned this because I love all the biohacking that is out there, but there's straight away a couple of biohacks that you can do today without having to pay anything extra. Uh, one of them is breath, the awareness of breathing and breathing into the nose. And it's not only about calming down or regulating your nervous system, but also what I just discovered about the nitric oxide and the importance of oxygen uh, and the use of oxygen in the body. Because it's not about being over oxygenated or, and, and also CO2, the, the, as we call the waste of mm -hmm. the respiration, it's actually not the evil guy here. Mm. You know, they all have to work together. It's almost like we build up a tolerance to CO2 in our body and then the entire functioning of our system, of our respiration system, but also our, um, our cardiovascular system, um, endocrine system, or the hormonal um, um, aspects that are happening are truly having a positive impact. So breathing, first hack. Second hack, mm -hmm. water. Drink water. Uh, as plain and simple as it is, and I always say to people, drink as much water first thing in the morning. And then in the next hour in the morning, because trust me when I say after a certain time, and usually let's say you wake up, whatever, five, six, seven a.m. By the time you're the 12 o'clock hits, you should already have most of your daily water um, in you because then it gets harder 
to be reminded of water. I mean, I'd have a water, but again, you, you train your body, mm -hmm. right? To, I mean, I always have my, a water bottle. I always drink. But again, if you drink a coffee, that's decaf, you know, that's, yeah, that's, that is actually dehydrating yeah. you as well. So there's a lot of other things as well. And obviously some foods have water, but please invest in water and drink water. Um, Do you also put any kind of minerals, salt in your water? All depends. All depends. Uh, I definitely... Um, believe based on the studies that mm -hmm. salt is good for you yeah. uh, for the muscles and, 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 and as, as well um, the more you train the more salt your body needs yeah. and not another big lie that we were told for so many years yeah, really. when i was like doing marathons it's like when it was like a hotter day and i was doing like maybe a long run or like actual marathon you could see like when you finish you actually have this white salt on your face mm. because i have sweat i was like sweating it out yep. so the water evaporated then i had like just because you could just take it from the skin it's like crumbs yeah. and cranes of salt yeah no absolutely so. no absolutely as well so yes i all depends i also i add some apple cider vinegar uh mm -hmm. to to my water it, it energizes me but also i feel like it's a nice detox for my body for my internal gut um also we haven't touched on this but uh, it's quite important to mention that about well, 12 years ago I, I went through cancer mm -hmm. um, so that was a, a, a big um, journey of consciousness and m becoming aware of how important my health is and it is the health is the wealth um, you know and if you don't have health you have nothing really yeah. um, so for me uh, looking after my gut my stomach um, as the cancer was related to stomach um, it's quite important so I feel mm -hmm. like you know apple cider vinegar with the mother with the cloudy bit not just apple cider vinegar very important no filtration it has to have that that um blurry mm. foggy in the bottle um aspect uh, bits 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 left um but yeah sometimes i do i do put uh, vitamins in um minerals um i tend to really focus well throughout the day another biohack is to really focus on my protein intake and how much protein I do eat. Um, there's no evil, there's no carbs are evil, white carbs are evil, uh, fat is evil. No, uh, it's not. Like it's, I, I believe in moderation and I believe in, again, being kind to yourself, what you eat, because what you eat is what you eat and how you eat and what you tell yourself about yourself as you eat is very important. Mm. So I remember preparing for the competition and I had in my um, food plan um, seven, six asparagus and I had seven and I was really hating myself for having wow. the seventh one. So very important to understand because the body will, will believe that you're in a state of stress that yourself just created because you had the seventh asparagus and as funny as it might sound i think a lot of people can relate to that if you have like you know oh one more square of chocolate that's really not gonna change anything that's like, like honestly 21 calories or something yeah. one square yeah, yeah it's not gonna truly not gonna change anything like it's not but do, if you speak to yourself if you believe it it's it is it is change. because yeah. the body then starts to protect you and the body will start to really fight it meaning that it will not want this to be absorbed. So inflammation might happen then. So a lot of the, the body is very responsive to your thoughts and to your beliefs and, and to then, oh yeah, I'll just have this one more. Ah, oh, no, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have. Why did I have this? So don't do that to yourself. So um, protein and, and have a, a nice balance of, of carbs and, and fat. Um, and yeah, and so important, daylight, sunlight, wherever you can, wherever you are. Uh, you know, if, if you can get out, um, you know, to reset, so important as well, the circadian rhythm, your, your body knows it, it's your clock. Especially in the morning. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You should, it, your, your eyes are made to see the daylight, not sunlight, the daylight. Mm -hmm. You know, so people quite often say, oh, but it's cloudy and it's, it's dark. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> your body, your, your, your receptors are quite smart. Yeah. They know. And once you get out, you get out and see, even watch, look outside the window. Just be there for a couple of minutes. It's okay. You, you can just just look outside. But this so that also like I think open the window because I think mm. uh, yeah. I think it was also in the Huberman Lab podcast. He was also discussing the lux, like actually measuring how much light to see like indoors mm. and how much like outdoors and even with the cloudy weather, it's the maybe it was hundred thousand lux outside, and indoors you like have. 1,000, 2,000, yeah. and but if you remove yeah. the class, like you open yeah. the window, you already get more. Yeah, and then and then it will become as well a, a an incredible way for you to 
be part of nature. You know, so because your circadian rhythm meaning will be reset to daylight, I'm awake. Nighttime, I'm asleep. Mm -hmm. You know, and that is exactly how a human being should yeah. function. Daytime, we are awake. And, and I, I absolutely understand there are people out there saying that, oh, but I'm an, a night owl and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a morning person. But challenge yourself a little bit by, by doing these little practices. I think right? that's also like habit. And they, they have learned to do this yeah, so now. and believe in it yeah. and this they told themselves i mean this and again i sometimes watch myself what i speak to myself you know oh i can't do that and yeah it's true oh i can't do that and yes it's true so the minute you start putting a lot of um, energy with with your i can i can't i am this i'm not that i'm a morning person i'm, a, I'm an evening person or oh, i don't eat cake because it makes me fat yeah, well, yeah, it, it will. You know, so there's so many things that, that the way we speak to ourselves and about ourselves and about it all, it's so important. Mm. So coming back to the bodybuilding part and mm. uh, believing all these bad things about your body, do you think there's also like this, I don't know, less stressful way, body loving way to do competing and prepare for bodybuilding competitions? Is mm. it possible in any way to talk to yourself kindly? to the whole journey in a kind way that's mm. not like destroying yourself because I also like a little bit destroyed my health I messed up my yeah. hormones and like lost period for six months and then gained 15 kilos after all this so do you think there is a way to do it I think so um, well, what if I would do it again um, I would definitely connect more with um, with the fullest understanding that I can only bring my body to a certain point, right? There is no comparison. And as it always is in these competitions, you're not judging your own body. Somebody else is judging your body. Yeah. And it, it might go different ways, mm. you know? So you, you will never know how your competition has prepared, how much they have done, etc. And And it's not really your role. You, you just give your 110%. Mm. Because if you're dedicated to... Um, to go on that stage, you just hopefully can create or bring out the best version of you um, and hopefully in the most healthy way as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can be an example for others that also want to attain that physique, but of course, understanding fully that this is not a lifetime physique. Yeah. Because that is the biggest, I feel like, um, um, misconception that people are having that the physique moment is exactly that it's a moment after that your body changes again so so the mental state and mental well-being is so important here and how you treat yourself and treat your 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 showing up showing yourself what what is really your why you know what is really the reason that you're competing and it, it kind of comes to all the aspects in life because if you're doing this for somebody else for your partner or because last year you you you, you got third place so you want to beat that place you just look at the reason, you know, if it is a strong belief that you have and a, and a good enough reason and a, a powerful why, and you have to kind of go deep within, you know, why do you want to do this? Are you trying to prove something to someone? And then mm. I would say, don't, it's the, the honest truth, don't. Yeah. But if you want to do this because you want to learn something about yourself, mm. you want to see how far you can push yourself. You want to, you want to then be able to translate that into your life because it is, it truly is the discipline that you have in a competition. You can then bring that to your work, to your life, anything that you do. Mm -hmm. It's it's a it's a discipline, determination. It's a consistency. It's it's almost like you are running on, you know, on knowing how to bring you to the next level. Yes, like, and if you can do this, you can do anything. Absolutely. I think Absolutely. Uh, former athletes they are also like very good at you know in leading positions because they know how to lead their own body and yeah. they know how to have discipline and how to get like more things done in less time yeah. because time is very precious in every moment and yeah. they also learn to prioritize themselves and yeah i was doing it exactly for these reasons mm. just to see what i can do with one body because before this i was a marathon runner for more than 10 years mm. i was like okay now i want to do something else yeah. and i want to see what my body can do yeah if i'm not running and if i'm like really really building i'm like yeah but the thing about it is and and again it, it comes to so many other things as well in life you 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 mustn't 
connect yourself with a label or with, you know, mm -hmm. I am a bodybuilder, you know, because that might feel, bring you a lot of frustration mm. in, your, in your body and your mindset. But if you say that bodybuilding is part of my life and I'm very happy to compete again, that's a different mindset. Mm. But if you attach yourself to, I am a bodybuilder, what will happen when you're not? Mm. And that, that will cause a lot of tension and stress in your body, which again might cause a lot of problems in your health and well-being. And I, I always like to say, if I, if I have done this, and that, that one of the reasons why I have done this, not only because I really want to see how far I can bring my body, but also how I can befriend my body, which didn't happen at all mm. it didn't i because uh, you know i thought i'm going to love my body i achieved a beautiful physique i I'm i was very proud but did i love myself more no mm. not at all it, it's completely different uh, time and place had to happen for me to start befriending my body and mind and that was through mind meditation mindfulness and breathwork and really understanding who i am on this planet and not what label i should carry uh, but going back to 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 the, the why my why was on the uh, to be on stage was to train others so if, if, a, if an athlete that goes on stage i truly believe that you know has done their their show why not invest time to teach the younger generation how to go on stages and how to prepare them for 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 all the all the things that you already went through so they don't have to go through it yeah you know and all the uh, you know because obviously we all know that there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of bad information out there that that you don't have to go through to achieve a title you truly don't mm. you know again i i got second places without doing all the things that so many people around me told me to do you know but i had a, a clear mindset that no i want to be natural first thing second thing it's me versus me you know and I, wherever you know however i'm going to do this i'm going to do this my way still with guidance of my coach but I'm going to do, I'm going to, and that gave me actually extra power. That's why my coach said, I've never seen anyone being so still loving life and happy mm -hmm. as you two weeks before show. And I was like joyful, happy. And he was like, what is going on? And there's moments where I was fully in the zone and mind was, I'm not talking, I'm not spending energy. But there's moments where I was, I was still enjoying my workouts. You know, I was mm -hmm. still enjoying the food that I was eating. You know, so there's a lot of that. So yeah, I mean, have, have a, a powerful good enough why and then you can you can definitely compete and see how far you can bring uh, yourself your physique mm. so you briefly also mentioned cancer before and you also mentioned that at some point in your life you were not into fitness at all so mm. was cancer like the switch into mm. healthier more optimal life absolutely yeah no ca cancer was a was a real teacher and it was a true moment of transformation um on all levels um knowing that i need to i really need to look after my physical health um, and what that actually means physical health and what it means to <coughs> excuse me to eat good um eat healthy uh how to prioritize my sleep my water intake all of these things so cancer was definitely a, a moment in my life which from a breakdown i really used it as a breakthrough you know, because I, I, I started to see how I wasn't using my stress. Mm. It was accumulating in my body. It was inflaming every single cell, tissue, organ. Until when the body can't fight any longer, when you're not breathing through the nose enough, when you're constantly mouth breathing, when that nitric oxide isn't in your bloodstream, doesn't, can not help with releasing fresh oxygen. So you're rusting inside. Mm. Then the body will finally shut down mm. and nowadays it is actually hard to see the reports on cancer everywhere around the world you know because again we have not been made to understand that by physical movement you can become not only healthier in the body but also in the mindset and in, in the overall well-being mm. and that will actually help you so much with actually becoming this 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 power unit that can fight any disease because i still believe that illnesses diseases will still happen right i mean we had the, we had the pandemic we got flus and it's not about not being sick but it's about how quick you can recover and how far you've brought your body to the state of 
dealing with this illness because some illnesses you, they might be out of our control there might be genetic ones there might be and I'm, I'm i hope everyone understands as well that this is my experience you know and of course whatever battle you are going through or maybe somebody in your family has gone through and maybe unfortunately isn't with us anymore uh, i hope you're taking this episode as a real um you know heart to heart conversation and 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 that it's been my experience um that i'm really sharing with you um i'm by all means i'm no oncologist so i'm no um you know guru in any field but i feel i but i do know that the things that i know i'm happy to share because they have helped many people and i hope they can either help you prevent or intervene if you're going through it um and hopefully truly hopefully you don't have to go through to this um to this uh, diagnosis or to any autoimmune diagnosis but yeah for me there was the moment where i just intuitively had to learn about my body mm. from scratch so i started to be again disciplined about it and read a lot about it read listen to podcast andrew huberman by i don't think he was actually out at that time in 2012 <laughs> i don't know who he was no he wasn't he 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 is a, he is a person that i listened to uh in the last couple of years for sure but back then it was more like um books studying and understanding what the physiology is really and then how to how to how to how to become just aware of of the overall health and that yeah that has truly um helped me to regain my health but also with the help of chemotherapy you know i will never uh, pretend that i haven't that i've done this the holistic way the health the healing way without the the help of um, um oncology and without the help of chemotherapy and in my case it was a year and a half of 16 chemotherapies with um becoming more aware about breath with meditating starting mm -hmm. to meditate with journaling with uh, moving the body i was i was going to the gym this is the first time when i was going to the gym when i was going through cancer when i was going through chemos because for me i put this in my mindset it was every day that i was in the gym it was like i won a battle against cancer it was one no for piotr and no for cancer so every mm -hmm. time i was in the gym or did some sort of training um it was like yeah i'm winning this you know and then the accumulation of these days they the little goals they really bring the big goal and they bring the overall health then as well yeah and it also turned your career completely around so completely. from this uh, corporate boss who was always stressed out burnt mm -hmm. out you switched to like more mindful journey and now you're also teaching uh, other people who are like mm -hmm. in you know maybe in this uh, leading ceo position you're now helping them yeah. to prevent i don't know cancer even yeah. in yeah. some ways and yeah. prevent like stress and other kind of diseases that are coming from yeah yeah it's a, it's been <laughs> exactly it's, it's 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 been a beautiful journey it's been a, a nice uh nice exploration of of life and how to use so many tips and tools and strategies and programs uh for your overall well-being so you know i'm lucky to go back to Uh, different corporations because it's not about me uh trying to say oh be also a breathwork master or be also a bodybuilder no people are very happy in corporate and in in office settings and that's okay that's amazing like i mean there's no, but uh if you use your health you can then live a healthy more aware life mm. in the corporate setting you know and that is that is what i really want to preach and that is that is the power of of energy movement if you know how to breathe during a meeting before asking for a raise mm. when you come into work when it's monday um if you know how to you know, use your mobility for your body so you don't have any stress in your back or you don't feel you know like the you're you're carrying a baggage of a weight uh, on your on your on your back when you know how to just properly just stand up behind your desk every 30 minutes every hour for even a minute and just stretch your body all these mini tools they are accumulating for the overall health then as well and they give you then a positive health response so going back to corporations now and and helping ceos and helping well-being um um teams hr teams all around the world has truly been my yeah my my desired clientele as well mm. because it's it's kind of going back where where it all kind of started i mean corporate was was a big a uh, part of my life for many years and I've, I've gotten some amazing friendships out of it and it was a beautiful journey honestly uh, I've taken a lot out of it um 
you know, but but uh, but going back there as a well-being advocate, consultant, give programs that you mentioned before. Unpack yourself is the program, a journey through mindful movements and the power of your breath, and giving these to CEOs and to um, corporations uh, has seen some incredible results. Mm. Incredible results in both productivity, um, less sickness, uh, more attention, more intention for the meetings, for people's work, and just a happier overall, well, um, collective team response because everyone then starts to really feeling that now we are part of a team. Mm. Yeah, I think this is also like turning around. It's like the workplace used to be like pla a place where people didn't want to go actually, mm. but you know, there can be happiness in yep. the workplace, especially if you're like spending so many hours of our lives in there, in the office, then I think it's, I always choose the kind of jobs whenever I am in corporate. No, I'm not always in the corporate world. I'm always choosing the places and jobs where I feel good mm. because I don't want to do anything that I don't like to do. Mm. And I want to be in an, in an environment that is also inspiring me. And I think with some mindfulness and breathwork and all that stuff, you can maybe even make a place better that you don't like so much. Mm. Yep. It's like, like I always say, if I start disliking something I'm like I have two options I can either leave and change the situation or I can change my own mindset mm. so I used to be the person who was mostly like changing the situation just leaving mm. leaving things and people yeah. behind but now I'm like more into this okay let's first try changing the mindset I can always see later if it doesn't work out yeah so I think this is something that you also bring to the workplaces you're helping people to feel good in a place where they're like spending a lot of time and I think it all starts with the CEO. It starts from the top mm. and then the culture yeah. spreads like, you know, yeah. all over the Absolutely. place. Absolutely. 100%. And then it's almost like it's a, it's a full permission, you know, to live a healthy, well life in the workplace, in the environment, as mm. you mentioned, where you're going to spend so many hours of your day. Yeah. You know, and I don't believe in work-life balance. Um, I believe in creating happy healthy functional environments wherever we go wherever we are so that so that one works well with the other mm -hmm. so that you know you can come back home to your partner whatever your family and be very happy mm -hmm. after the work that you've just done and the other way around as well that you use these tools in life so you can bring them to work and as you mentioned it is coming up from from the head mm -hmm. right it's like the, the ceo gives is kind of the, the permission giver to w look after the health and well-being and then why not see how that affects your team and then affects the numbers that the, mm. the team is bringing because of course let's be honest i mean it's it's all based on either sales or targets and that's okay as well mm -hmm. kpis of course but having a having a happy team having a happy environment and a healthy environment boosts uh sales productivity uh and allows also the 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 person that is working on feeling really that they that they're seen mm. yeah. that they're seen that they acknowledged and then if a business works with clients the client see, sees that as well mm. the client sees that they want to work with that team they mm. want to work with that company and they want to be around them because they're also happy there you know, mm. and it's just such a beautiful, like, this is not, oh, yeah, you're all happy, but you're actually, you're genuinely happy. You don't mm. have to force it. You're not putting a mask on, you know, and that is, and that is achievable. And I've, mm. I've witnessed that. I've seen that. And I've, you know, I've had some amazing results, both with CEOs leaders and also then translated that into um, the entire office well-being. Mm. That sounds like a good idea to have it in any kind of office, mm. any kind of workplace, any kind of life. So you work with people like one-on-one, -on -one, you work with CEOs, teams, and you also have retreats. So maybe say a little bit more about the retreats, like where are they all happening? Mm. Uh, <laughs> in different locations. <laughs> uh, but um, for sure, um, the one-on-one, -on -one, um, transformative um, experiences, journeys, which are very much... Uh, intention based and very um, uniquely designed for a person that comes to me um, by filling out this lifestyle questionnaire form uh, where I ask many deep questions yeah. about where they are, how they feel, their intention for the session, why they've chosen me, 
why what, what has led them to me uh, and then of course seeing if they are aware of their blocks limitations anything that uh, that they want to resolve if they're not that's that's fantastic mm. if they are also fantastic there's no right or wrong here um because then we can go really deep with certain um somatic moves uh meditations and breathworks and brainwave simulation music and my guidance so that 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 is always transformative for sure like this mm -hmm. is you you're gonna you're gonna get a transformation you're gonna have a life-changing experience so that so that's that is definite um, and then i do group events i do different corporate events as well so i do different uh talks mental health talks i do um i also like to say they're not just talks because they're boring they're interrupters they're talk with interruptions so that you can use already the tools strategies during the talk in your everyday life so you have a little few bits of like ah okay i can use this you know before this meeting and i can do this etc so i do plenty of um, of these kind of workshops events and talks um and then retreats absolutely mm -hmm. i've got one now coming up um in Mexico, um, then I'll be also in different places around the world, um, gathering with, with beautiful people all around the world to create uh, some magic. And, and the one that and we have one planned. Yes, this one. <laughs> exactly. Quantum triumph. Yes. So me, me and Celia, so mm. us, who are coming together um, in Estonia. Yeah. Uh, in so, your home country. Yeah, in my home country, so I can share all the treasures that the nature has to offer because we will have it on an island, the second uh, largest island in Estonia called Hiuma, which actually translates into land of the giant. So this is how the name was also inspired, quantum giants. So the giants are coming from Hiuma and quantum means like, you know, this big leap. And we also believe that everybody has a giant within them and by giant we mean like you know something like a superman mm. you have like this giant being mm. and you have this giant potential inside yeah. you and it's waiting to you know come out that's why we want to help people do it and it's actually through some things that i also struggle with like resting mm. resetting reconnecting so i'm also like teaching myself these things so um. i think that's just the best thing if you want yeah. to learn something just teach 100 <laughs> percent, and uh, absolutely i i do believe that wherever you are on your journey you're able to teach others as well you're able mm -hmm. to coach others uh, with the capacity of the knowledge that you've already received uh and always willing to discover more yeah you, know, you, you already do yeah you always like you know in this growth mindset that uh, you're expanding i think they said that if you know like five percent more than the person you're teaching you can already teach this person exactly and if you keep evolving you're always five percent ahead at least yes so yeah, yeah so i'm very excited for this one i'm very yeah. excited for quantum giants because it's so needed in a world that wants us to run chase mm -hmm. uh, go faster without using so many beautiful modalities that we will be uh, teaching and guiding and 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 befriending uh mm -hmm. with every single participant because it's all going to be about integrating um a lot of life's challenges and stories um and also learnings it's all going to be about resting uh all going to be about how to use time how to almost plan rest into your life mm. you know because for a person that is occupied and busy and that is the way it is resting has to be planned yeah they need to schedule it and they yeah. have, it, it's like having a like, permission giving yourself this permission to Absolutely. rest yeah yeah and i'm also telling this to myself right now mm. yeah uh, giving myself the permission to rest and watch netflix if i really need to do this yeah and exactly yes yeah. so it, it is quite important to to be there together, mm -hmm. to gather um, some incredible human beings that are willing to see their leaping into the giantnessness, <laughs> giantnessness. <laughs> yeah. I, I like to sorry. I, I like to create words. I'm actually not sorry for that. I just I'm just a word creator because mm -hmm. so many, so often uh, words are just limit, limited. Our language is very limited. So I, I just like yeah. So giantnessness. Uh, because all of us are carrying something so beautiful, so incredible, so big that only when we tap in to ourselves, um, we can bring that giant out. And then mm -hmm. when that giant is, giant is brought out, we truly are not only for ourselves, but also for the collective and for the planet. We can 
quantum jump it. We can mm. quantum giant it. If 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 this actually <laughs> even makes sense, I'm just making up now uh, yeah. sentences. But that's okay. Uh, but it, there is there is such a power of of all of us coming together, um, truly standing in our power as giants and feeling how we are also raising the awareness of the planet and and making sure that the whole planet is bringing that level of acceptance and becoming that mm. awakening as well um you know yeah, so awakening really, is also it is part of yeah, the yeah, yes yes yes. Of, yes yes awakening awakening the giants awakening the giants because the giants have all the power they need to do yeah. anything to live the full potential and the giants are not afraid of anything so we want to have a world where people are not afraid of anything and they actually do the stuff mm. and they step out of the norms and like you know do the scary things as well but they won't be scary anymore because they are the giants now so yeah, yeah like maybe slightly uncomfortable mm. in the beginning but not scary anymore yeah and this way people can grow yeah and it's the, the, the beauty is that you know we we have this concept that we want to do uh, obviously in estonia but if you are interested uh, to bring this somewhere else around the world uh feel free to contact us because mm. you know we we as Celia said we are also teaching ourselves how to rest but with the modalities of the different techniques that we already are using we're able to help your community your organization your business your team wherever you are to rest integrate um connect reconnect yeah. and truly feel um the power of becoming fully in your power in the giantnessness as Gi i mentioned yes. giantnessness <laughs> yeah so just yeah just feel free to uh, connect with us the first one will be definitely in estonia it yeah. is in july 2024 yes and if people want to find you where get, can they find you actually so mainly uh, the two platforms that i use yep. uh, instagram mifit underscore coach uh, and linkedin uh, my full name uh, piotr Chepiel. so it's p-i-o-t-r i will also put a link in the description so yes and the surname Chepiel, c-i-e P I E L, but yeah, they're the main two platforms that I use. Um, website as well, mifitcoach.com. Uh, different services, but please feel free. I don't like to mention too many services as well because I like to tailor mm. services to your needs. And a lot of either businesses or groups or individuals uh, might feel that the services that I provide are not for them, mm. and that's not true. Um, I'm very happy to uh, have a call. Um, you know, a free discovery call, an intention call, where we meet our, each other's energies and I ask you some questions, you ask me some questions and we can go deeper. Uh, how we can work together, how we can make it work, both in person uh, and online, because um, both options are available. Hmm. So you're not like holding very tightly onto your packages, you're like also willing to expand and Always. adapt to the client's needs. Always that's great always always because i mean i'm i'm constantly evolving and learning as well and mm -hmm. transforming and i i like to implement a lot of the things that i already know uh, that are that i have qualifications for to also do mm -hmm. it, this is not just uh, weekend courses that i've done i've actually studied for many of the modalities that i that i do so so th and then um, the results are the actual certification and qualifications that i've received uh, but i always like to explore all the new things that are coming out and they are coming out every day and every week mm -hmm. so um so i definitely like to even challenge my own knowledge uh i i always say as well you know yeah i am the teacher but i'm also the student yeah. and uh, i would be delighted to to see how we can honestly work together amazing and do you also like teach people like i don't know fitness like you know this classical personal training stuff hmm absolutely but, you but, but it's, it's it's different it's, of it's, course it it's has different. A, it has a twist it has yeah. a twist yeah. it has it's a it, i mean I, I actually call this program strength meets mindfulness mm -hmm. so it's it's definitely for everyone that is um already on their journey um at the gym working out is content with their body has a has a great physique you know looks good but maybe they want to bring themselves to the next level mm -hmm. 
and they want to observe as well how they're breathing and how their breath can help them, how maybe some isometric moves can be used in their workouts, you know, when should they do cardio, when they do strength training, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to share all these tips uh, in, in this podcast. You have to contact me to, to get to know all these uh, additional uh, things. But there's so much knowledge as well that I gained, um, you know, with teaching and coaching so many clients from different backgrounds. It honestly doesn't matter um who you are uh, what your past has been uh, whether what gender you are what age you are what body fat percentage you have it does not matter at all mm -hmm. nothing i mean i am not your typical f uh, personal trainer i am really a person that will understand you be kind to you and i will teach you to do the same thing uh, the same way of, of talking to yourself so that you can really start loving the journey that is in the gym outside the gym as you eat well be well and overall then you will feel good and after the feeling good you will look good not the other way around it's not looking good to feel good feeling good in the body to looking good and then you will have the best physique ever and become stronger and mindful at the same time boom well and with this we are done thank you so, thank you thank you so Amazing. much yay Mwah. See you all very, very soon. Hug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.